some constant Kosteka numbers, and here, if Kosteka numbers appears, that means there is no hope to find a simple recurrence. So what we should do? At first, let me define some notation. Just remind you what what is what I'm going to use, what kind of notation. So n lambda is the length of the partition. n is fixed, the dimension. Maybe n is bigger than n lambda. So I will add 0 to the lambda. I will extend. And if we have a vector in n dimensional, so I will arrange this vector as a partition. And I denote it by bracket of v. And I denote by the basis, the standard basis of Rn by E1 to En. Now for partition, I denote by lambda prime the conjugated one. And as we know, lambda prime k, it's the number of the entries in the partition that greater than k. And show a lambda is just the first entry in the conjugated one. And if we have vector, I define y lambda is the multiplication, and n lambda is the multiplicity of the part k in lambda, and I define in zero it's the dimensional n. So we done with each when we usually. But I found that when I want to find a recurrence in relation, I need good definition. So again, Kostaka numbers appears in there. So that means there are no hope to find recurrence. So I want to replace separate shoe huh? integrals by something else. Something else, it's called B lambda. I define something like that. And and then I extend this by something else. Since how I arrive to this definition when I want to calculate the lambda, since phi, the weight here, contains something dividing by the fa factors of yj minus yk, I decide to define another kind of integral called kc, which divides by y minus yk. So, why it's enough y1 minus yk? Because my integral, it's invariant up to permutation. So because it's simplex. And if we change the variables, let's not change the integral. So that means I can, if I have ya, yi, so I, if I do the x exchange variables between yi and y1, then I get this one. So it's enough to consider y1. But this is not the case. We need another one, which is called k lambda c, where appears 1 minus something. This something, I can assume y1. And for specific case, when c equal lambda 1, I donate by just for single things a lambda k. So here it is, the first layer. So I want, I have three integrals. I want connection between these three integrals. So the first one, it is a lambda, kc, it depends in terms of b, and if c equal lambda k, we have vinches, the integral vinches, and get zero. So how we can improve this one? The group, in fact, it's a part. So I will change the variables yk and y1 and in, in this integral. Because the symmetric of this weight, phi lambda, phi y, under any permutation of any pair of variables, we obtain this one. So I changed y1 with yk. So because that the minus one, and here we see y1, it's appeared there, y1 times lambda 1. So it will be y1 times lambda k. 
at y1 at this with bar c. So it will be yk bar c, and I restrict the multiplication. So, and if we, if we consider three cases, c less than lambda k, c equal lambda k, or c greater than lambda k, we get in each case a formula, and we will see here in the case, in the first case, c less than lambda k, I get what I want by using simple observation. So this is almost the trick also in C lambda k because it's we have one plus one minus and C equal lambda k then it should be zero right because C greater than lambda k it's the same trick can be worked. So here it is the lemma which I proved and here it is the corollary. Let us say I want a lambda k. Which means a lambda k? I put instead c lambda 1. So if c is lambda 1, because it's partition, we are either here or here. So if we are in the last case, so it's match. If we are in the middle case, so also it's match because it's zero. So this is the corollary that match a integral a of type a to sum of integrals of type b. And here's the example. Let us take the example of this because this is the example of the last results in this area by Sergei that he did. So if we take lambda m twos twos and m one ones, so we get a zero when k between 2 and m2. Just let us look to the, to the power and let us uh, try to see what is lambda 1. Lambda 1 is 2. And lambda 1 is 2. Lambda k is 2. 2 minus 2 minus 1, it's minus 1. That means the sum is 0 and that's no. And if, again, if we have k between m2 plus 1 and m1 plus and two, that means it's easy to see, it's only one possibility, it's the half of the integral. And here again we have two possibilities, and that's it. So, more general case, here again I take all the possibilities when c equal one, c equal zero. We need this example in fact to construct the last expression what we want at the end. So now, what is the connection between k lambda and k lambda zero and b again? We can construct a proof, and the proof again is used by simple substitution of this base identity and to use the the, the definitions of k and k zero and b. We get the proof. I will just sketch it. And another, another relation between k and a, here is a, a very nice relation. For any c, we can get relation for k lambda c. And here, the proof here, it's we need another trick, a Stokes theorem, which I, when I differentiate this, can, the, this function, then, on, on y1, respect to y1, I get this formula up to the factor of phi y, and if I use it carefully with Stokes theory, I get zero from one side, and on the other side, I can calculate by this integral. And then, solving this equation in terms of k lambda c, we get exactly what we want. So, in fact, this blame, this all this lemma is a blame with three definitions that are seen to us not connected to the original problem. But we will see later, this is in fact the solution. So here it is lambda, again, the two m 2s two and m one ones and c equal two. I substitute it in my formula and I get that k of 2 expressed by terms 